Hey photographers, why don't you bracket? In this video, I'm demonstrating the various types of brackets available on recent model cameras and when they'll be useful in your photography practice. Uh, nearly every camera can bracket, although in many cameras the only option is an exposure bracket. An exposure bracket takes multiple images, usually at least three, with exposure settings higher and lower than the setting you've chosen, well, or the camera has chosen. That can be helpful when you're not confident about the exposure or if you're going to try your hand at HDR by combining multiple images. Now, it snowed in Toronto this week, and we both know that snow can mislead your camera's meter, providing a less than ideal setting. On an overcast day, it underexposes. On a bright day, it overexposes. Or is it the reverse? <laughs> but, but who needs to remember? The bracket will take care of it. <laughs> so for today's demo, I'm using the Fujifilm X100V. It has a better than average selection of bracketing options. On this camera, bracket options are on the drive menu where you select AE bracket. Then, in the camera's main menu, use the AE bracket setting to select the number of images and the exposure step interval. Uh, just because the X100V can, and because it's fun to demonstrate, I'm taking seven images with a one-stop increment. The scale across the bottom marks each exposure point. The next setting determines whether you will snap the shutter for each frame or continuous, where the camera takes them all with a single shutter press. And the last setting sets the sequence. I prefer from dark to light. And for this scene, I set the shutter at 125 and the aperture at f5.6 with auto ISO and auto white balance. Press the shutter release and the camera saves seven images in quick succession, each one stop higher than the previous. Let's look at what the camera did. This is the first, the darkest image. And because I'm recording JPEG Fine Plus RAW, both a JPEG and a RAW file are saved for each. While reviewing your images, the DISP key displays several options. When you see the histogram, navigating up reveals several more screens of information. Auto ISO set 160, and we set the aperture at f5.6, but the camera changed the shutter duration to 1 over 1,000, three stops shorter than the base setting. And as we look through the images, it's only the shutter duration that changes, all the way up to 1 15th, three stops longer than the base. So, which do you prefer? I like the one and two under images best. The saturated blue of the sky is my preference. Uh, that does leave the tree on the right a little dark. And we've just demonstrated why for most snowy scenes on bright days, it's wise to set the exposure compensation down a stop or so. But using a bracket to select the best image is only one purpose. M many photo editing applications can combine these multiple exposures into a single image. Uh, the X100V also has an ISO bracket. One third, two thirds, or a full stop range. A single shutter press captures three images, and there are no adjustments for a number of images nor for order here. In playback, it's standard exposure first, ISO 160, then one stop up, ISO 320. One under, that pushes down to the L80 setting. I thought there would be only one raw file because there's only one shutter release, but there are three. The RAW conversion tool doesn't have an ISO setting, but in the push-pull processing, you'll see one under has also been applied here. The full range of this adjustments is up to plus three, down to minus two. That's an option worth considering if you didn't bracket and you need to make a change later. <laughs> and note that in-camera RAW processing isn't your only option. Fujifilm's free XRAW Studio app can apply all of the same adjustments using your computer. But it does have two quirks. It requires your camera to be connected while you're using it, and strangely, it can't transfer images from your camera to the computer 
So its workflow is a little complicated. There's one more exposure bracket, dynamic range, which can be tricky. The dynamic range bracket has no settings, and it opens the shutter three times with a single press. I know that to achieve the maximum dynamic range of 400, the ISO has to be at least 640 on this camera, so I set the ISO at 640 and adjusted the shutter speed to compensate. One image is taken at each of the three settings, 100, 200, and 400, in that order. My warning here is that if you are using auto ISO and the default setting is under 640, the camera will increase the ISO and the dynamic range, which probably does not provide the results you want. Also, if you're planning to make dynamic range adjustments using the raw conversion tool, it's not possible to increase the dynamic range, only reduce it. So an image taken with dynamic range set to auto, where auto set the dynamic range to 200, can't be increased to 400, but can be reduced to 100. Exposure isn't the only setting that makes photographers nervous. White balance can also be tricky, particularly as our eyes adjust very quickly to changing light conditions. For example, the camera sees much more amber in low-light interiors than I do. So I've set my lighting kit to 5000K for this scene with Legos Everyone is Awesome. But there's some daylight spill from the window, so is 5000 right? A white balance bracket might help. The X100V has plus or minus 1, 2, and 3. And I hope I'm not the only one who feels that that's just not enough information. Using plus or minus 3, the camera saves 6 files, JPEG and RAW, for each. Playback information shows the setting that's been used. The first was at 5000K as expected. The second image looks more blue, and its white balance is 4350K. The third image, more amber, has a white balance point of 5880K. I also tried starting with 4000K, three down settings 3570, and three up is 4550. Uh, someone knows what the algorithm here is. I didn't spend any more time figuring it out. Again, if you missed it in the field, it might be easier to use the in-camera RAW conversion or the XRAW Studio software for your adjustments. The same is true of the film simulation bracket. The menu provides the option to select your favorite three. They're also all saved from a single shutter press, but can all be changed using RAW conversion. The last bracket is Focus, which can really transform macro photography. Like exposure, the menu sets the options. With auto, the camera selects the number of images and the focus distance increment. You select whether the images are taken continuously, using the zero setting, or one by one, at intervals from one to ten seconds, which might be useful if your flash needs recharge time. Compose the scene and snap. And it often takes as many as 387 images, in this case 102, as it sweeps from the furthest to the nearest focus distance. Uh, although it requires a little more work and experimentation, I prefer the manual settings. You set the number of frames and step the frame-to-frame -frame distance adjustment. Uh, these are arbitrary numbers, and vary depending on the lens, the aperture, and the starting distance. This is a fixed lens, so aperture and starting distance. I can demonstrate by showing you the difference. The black figure is at the lens's closest focus distance, then each figure is about 15 millimeters further away. If I select 50 images with a setting of 1, the adjustment barely changes the focus from the black figure. Then, with a setting of 5, the focus moves back to the orange and yellow figures. 50 images at 10 takes focus back to the blue figure. When the bracket's done, you can select the image that has the figure you want in focus, or 
using the magic of Photoshop, they can be combined or stacked to create a single image where they're all in focus. So, hopefully that provides a starting point to help you think about where brackets might be useful for you. Uh, I think you'll find that exposure and focus brackets are the most useful, but beyond that, most provide adjustments that you could also make while you're editing, so they'd be of more value to those photographers among you who prefer straight out of camera. Get creative! Go out and fill up your memory cards and drain your batteries. Now, as my hashtag says, I am not sponsored, so there are no interruptions while you're watching my videos. But that decision has a financial impact, so I am very grateful to those of you who decided to support this channel by becoming a member, although I think of you as my sponsors. So if membership is for you, please use the join button below, but don't worry if you decide to subscribe instead. I don't put videos behind a paywall, and I do read and reply to all civil comments and relevant questions. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.